Hey folks, it's June with RV at the Tanners. Uh, today we're out camping. We've been here for six days. Um, we got about another seven days to go here. We're at Rick Wiki Up Reservoir. Uh, this is a very remote location. We have no services. I don't think Luna I've seen another person in quite a long time. And we really like to come here because we can ride our motorcycles and we can just get away and, and kind of unplug from everything. The downside with that is, that, like I said, there's no services. So last year when we were here, we were using three of our Trojan batteries and during the day we would take time to work on our blogs and stuff and we'd use a lot of power and then at night what happened is we would end up having to run our generator every night on our batteries so what we've done now is we've had the ability to upgrade our battery sources uh, we'll show you those in a minute but now we have six batteries from Battleborn six lithium batteries and again we're on day six and we have not yet gone below 75 percent power and we'll get into some of the technologies with lithium in a minute but the neat thing about that is the trailer still thinks we're at full power. So what we've been able to do is extend our, our stay here without having to bring out the generator, being able to harvest more power from the sun with our solar. We'll give you a pan around and let you see the campsite, but with our solar, we're pretty limited on that because of these massive trees that are around us. So we have a portable solar as well, and we're trying to harvest as much of that as possible. But on some of those cloudy days, we just can't harvest enough sunlight to charge those batteries last year, the uh, Trojan batteries. So this year with the lithium batteries, they charge about four times faster than like an AGM battery or a flooded battery. So they've been able to capture that and be able to put that power back in. All right, so I wanted to give you a kind of a view of how uh, the shade is impacting the, the trailer. So you can see here that there's a little bit of shade, uh, sun on the front. The back part is pretty much shaded right now. And those of you who know a lot about solar, that impacts your whole solar input. So a little bit of shade kind of causes a catastrophe to everything, depending on how you have your solar configured. Okay, so now we're going to show you the two applications. Uh, I have a battery monitor. It's a BMV712. Uh, that connects uh, through a shunt, and uh, all the information is then sent up to a little display in the front. But uh, Victron has also put in a Bluetooth capability, so you don't have to actually go to it. You can access it from your phone, your tablet, whatever. So we're going to go through that first, and you're going to be able to see it's connecting to the device. And what you see now is I have about 79% charge on my battery. I'm pulling in about 4.1 amps right now because, like you saw earlier, we weren't uh, in direct sunlight. A lot of that is shaded. So total, we've consumed about 300, 139 amp hours. If you slide over, you can see that my depth of discharge of 174 amp hours out of the 600 amps we have available via the six Battleborn batteries that each have 100 amp hours. Over on the right, you see that we've consumed 557 amp hours, so that means we've put back in via the roof solar panel and our portable solar panel, 383 amp hours. Next, what you see is the controller, my MPPT controller, and it's monitoring the panels on the roof. So the roof's outputting very little right now because it's in the shade, so it's putting out about 66 watts, which equates to about 65 volts. Uh, the controller itself is then converting that to 4.6 amps being put into the battery and we have about 13.43 volts in the battery which means it has a very good charge. Uh, so now I want to show you pretty excited on how we did the wiring for these six Battleborn batteries. Um, pretty excited because we have the 600 amp hours and then getting it wired in is easy but you just kind of need to know what you're doing. Um, so the configuration that we chose with these Battleborns allows me to have all the positive connections on the inside, so it makes this clean inside here, and all my negative connections are now on the outside. Uh, like I showed you before, we have the uh, Victron battery monitor kit. So off of one pole of the or one terminal of the battery is a negative connection that goes over to the, the uh, Victron connection, and then allows me to monitor the battery from inside either on the terminal itself, the display, or on my phone with the Bluetooth connection, and I showed you that uh, information. So coming over here, uh, you'll see that I have one connection coming off of the battery, that the cable goes in, and then that power then goes out to my distribution bus and powers the RV. Coming in, I have the power from my inverter, my Go Power, my IC2000, goes in through the fuse, I can actually turn that on and off so I can control if the power is, is coming in or not. That comes in, and now I've wired that to a uh, battery, what I call battery number six. So I have one positive coming in here. Off of my solar panels, I have that power coming in uh, over here on battery number uh, four. And so we have power coming in. So I'm trying to uh, distribute the charge. So on battery six, battery four, and then out on battery number one. So it's a load balancing. And then again, we only have one coming out 
if I want to do some maintenance on my solar, I have the ability to just turn my solar panels off here, and then there's no power coming off of the solar on the roof, so I can do any kind of battery maintenance here or wire maintenance and not have to worry about uh, power. So I'll turn those back on. And finally, I have a disconnect switch for the entire coach. So everything gets turned off except for the emergency brakes to the RV. Uh, legally, I think you have to have those on at all times. So in summary, that's what we've done with the batteries. Uh, they're, they inhere pretty tight. Um, one idea that Melinda had uh, was to add over here, we've got an actual rubber doormat. Um, you can see it flapping a little bit here. So that just adds a little bit of cushion for the batteries as we're driving down the road. Rather than have them on this metal that's in the bottom, um, um, again, great idea from Melinda in order to use that doormat. And then we snugged them up with a couple of two by fours here. This one's drilled down and then another one's drilled down. It allowed me a great place to do my cable management coming off of the batteries. So all in all, they're in here really solid. They're not gonna move around and jump around if we hit any kind of potholes. Uh, so really, really excited about these battle worn batteries and uh, the power that they give us to camp over long periods of boondocking. All right, so I've shown you a lot of stuff so far on the batteries. I showed you the wiring diagram up front, talked to you about how the batteries charge uh, about 4x faster on the solar and they can achieve that charge faster. Uh, so just some of the interfaces with the uh, stuff from Victron showing you the power of the batteries. But we haven't talked about one thing and that comes down to price. Yeah, when you first look at lithium batteries, it's a kind of a sticker shock. But we need to walk you through that uh, and realistically show you over the life and the power that these provide that it is, while more expensive, it is a better value over the life of your trailer or your RV, whatever you're using them within. And we'll walk you through some of this on a presentation that I put together here. But the initial shocker is still there. Uh, the batteries themselves list from Battleborn, the ones that I have, for $949 each for the 100 amp. Um, and I have six of those. Uh, compared to an AGM battery uh, with an equivalent price of somewhere in the 250 range. But we'll walk through some of that in the presentation. And hopefully after the end of this, uh, maybe it'll make a little more sense why the price is more than uh, typical AGM and flooded batteries and why the overall value, not the price, the value that you get from it uh, will make sense for you. So let's jump in and we'll take a look at that. I'm gonna scoot over a little bit. We're gonna show the presentation up here. All right, so a typical AGM battery, as you see here, when it's charged at 100%, it will produce about 12.73 uh, volts as it starts to dissipate, the charge goes down. These are the percentages in this column, and this is the voltage that you'll get off the battery. So at 90%, you see about 12.62, 80%, and so forth. You start to get down into this yellow zone here, and this is where you start to get into the danger zone with AGM and flooded batteries, because once you hit that 50% mark, you're really starting to um, do a disfavor to the battery, and it's not gonna come back fully charged after you go past 50%. They're all the same, the AGMs, the floodeds, they all have that 50% threshold. So once you hit about 12.1 volts or anything under 12 volts, you're already below that 50% threshold where you're starting to do damage to those batteries and they won't recover the next time you charge them back to their 100% full value. Moving down, it's just kind of the opposite with lithium. You see lithium has a core start a voltage of around 13.2 volts. And as you start to work your way down the voltage, at 90%, it's still at 13.2, 70%, 13.2 volts. These things hold their voltage the entire way down. I never really saw ours get below 13, maybe 13.1 volts, and that's way down here. So at 40% charge, they're still outputting 13.2 volts. Uh, I think I have an error here. I think this is around 13.1 at 10%. So my batteries are down to 10% charge. It is still outputting 13.1 volts. If you ever woke up in the middle of the night and your refrigerator is screaming because your batteries uh, have gone below 12 volts or your furnace won't start because they all require a full power from your batteries in order to work. I don't know why it is, but it seems like the, bat the refrigerator and the furnace and uh, the propane all run out at 3 a.m. in the morning. I don't know why that is. It's just an RV law of nature. But this is very, very important as you look here, right? You can still draw these batteries way, way down, down to almost zero. As it approaches zero, it'll obviously stop working, but it's still outputting over 12 volts of power, probably 12.7, 12.8 volts. That's key in order for you to stay out longer, boondocking, dry camping, whatever you call it, so you have more and more power. Again, if you did it with an AGM battery, you're already below at 12.1, just at 50%. So we'll move down a little bit more here. I'm gonna compare these to the Trojan batteries that I had in, in um, RRV before. 
So if you look at these, uh, each one weighs about 85 pounds, the Trojan batteries. Um, they were a deep cycle fledged batteries. I did not have AGM batteries. And they retail for about $275 each. So for me to get 300 amp hours, uh, it was about $550 investment in these batteries. Uh, I told you earlier I have six uh, of the lithium batteries in our trailer, but I'm going to back that off to three just to kind of make the math easy here as we roll through the, this example. Um, so in the Battleborn side of the, of the case here, uh, they weigh 29 pounds each. That's less than a case of beer, uh, so pretty light. Uh, and again, retail value uh, is $949. So for me to get 300 amp hours from my lithium, it is a base price of $2,847. That's what I said, $2,847. So again, that's the price. We're going to talk about the value here in a moment. Again, back over here for 300 amp hours of AGM or flooded, it's about $550. But remember what I said earlier when I said that you could only discharge your batteries down to 50%. So realistically, in order for you to get 300 usable amp hours, you're going to need four batteries now. Now you have what the batteries would think is 600 amp hours, but now 300 of that is usable. So we're getting to start to compare apples to apples here, where you see I've got an $1,100 investment now, and now I have actual 300 amp hours that I can actually use. Apples to apples. Now, the batteries themselves, these AGM batteries, flooded batteries, typically get around 300 charge cycles. That's when you're at 50% back up to 100, 50% to 100. So that's quite a bit of charge cycles. And we're gonna round that up to about 500. We're gonna make the math a little bit easier. So we're gonna round that number way up from 300 to 500. And then the estimated charge cycles on a lithium battery is 3,000. Yeah, 3,000 times you can recharge these things from zero, not 50, zero, back up to 100%. So that is a, a, a big, big number right here where we're going to 3,000. So what we're gonna to try to do is, as you equate uh, this, the same amount of recharges on uh, AGM to, flip, or to lithium. So in order to do that, we're going to do some quick math here. So if I told you earlier, four AGM batteries at 500 cycles each. So that'll round up. Now in order to get to 3,000 cycles, I'm going to need 24 AGM batteries. That's a lot more than just what I have over on this side where there's only three lithium batteries. Again, and get that same number of charge cycles I need 24 AGM batteries. And again, remember, I've rounded that up from 300 to 500, so it's probably less than that. A little bit more information here. So if I wanted to do some quick math, 24 batteries times $275 each. Now, in an AGM world, I'm at $6,600, whereas it's a lot less. It's about you know half price over here at $2,800 for the lithium. And again, you get to use that whole battery. 100% to zero versus 100% to 50% charge. So finally, what if I did use the actual numbers? What if I did use the 300 cycles in order to get to the 3,000? I'm going to need 40 batteries, AGM batteries, in order to do that at an $11,000 price. Remember the life cycle, or the, the DODs, depth of discharge, guys. You don't want to go below 50%. So these are the cycles. You go from 50 to 100, 50 to 100. Using the industry standard of 300, not the 500 where I rounded up before to try to make it even easier, I'm going with the, the real numbers now. 3,000 cycles requires 40 AGM batteries, $11,000. Okay, now you're starting to see the value here of lithium over AGM. That initial cost, you have to get past. Once you get past that, it makes a lot more sense. So in summary, we're back here with the, the Battleborns. Again, 29 pounds each. They're very, very light. In the winter, what I would typically do is bring the RV home and I would winterize it, blow, blow out the, the lines, uh, put some antifreeze in there and get it ready for winter. That also required that I disconnected all the batteries and brought them in and I would put them on a tender over the winter. Now here in this part of Oregon where I live, it doesn't really get that cold. We might see a week or so of um, you know 20 degree weather, uh, but it doesn't last long. When I contacted Lith uh, Battleborn, they told me that the range of their batteries um, once you disconnect them, so fully charge your batteries, but you can then leave them in your trailer, your RV, whatever you have it in, down to negative 20 Fahrenheit. Now, that requires that you disconnect both the negative and the, the positive terminal, and nothing is connected to it. But you can leave the connections that are already there, that connect the batteries together that you saw, because that was a lot of wires for me. So I'm going to plan to do that this winter, because we don't get down to negative 20. The opposite of that, so heat. 
The batteries themselves can also work up to 150 degrees. They'll work all the way up to 150, and then they have a harder time charging and discharging after 150. So if you're in a place, maybe in Arizona, where it gets really, really hot in the summer, you might be approaching that 150 in your front compartment. You might want to have a fan or something in there blowing. But here in Oregon, I don't think I'd ever approach that kind of situation where I'm going to hit that high range of 150 degrees where it would impact charging and, and usability down to the negative 20. So I've just saved myself a lot of time being able to have to pull those batteries in and out. So now it's going to allow Melinda and I the ability to just quickly run off on a weekend. If something's not going to happen around town or around the home, we can run over to storage. Uh, I can hook up two connections, the positive and the negative, and I'm ready to go again. I don't have to bring the batteries out. I don't have to worry about putting them on a tender all year long. It's a really, really good situation in order to have these batteries, and their capabilities is off the chart. All right, so I hope you got a lot out of this. I am really excited to have these Battleborn batteries in our RV. It's going to extend some of the dry camping places that we go where I do not have to bring my generator anymore. Uh, I do still rely on solar, but I don't have to rely on it as much anymore because these 600 amp hours that we're bringing with us will really allow us to go deep into the forest, find places that have a lot of tree cover, and my solar isn't always producing a lot of power, but that's okay because now I have 600 amp hours where I can use it fully. Remember, I have that 13 0.2 volts all the way down to 10, 20% of the batteries, and they're still producing a lot of power. So it's a great way. Uh, it's a big investment, of course, I have to admit that. But once you're there, uh, you're going to see the return over and over and over on these batteries, being able to put you into locations where you really want to go. Last weekend, I was camping with some folks, and they went, came over and took a look at the batteries themselves. And the gentleman that I was talking to decided he was going to pick up two of the batteries because his RV, they have a residential refrigerator, and I'm sure a lot of large motorhomes as well. But some folks now have just the, the residential refrigerator. So when you're in tow, you have to run an inverter. And he doesn't get a lot of power off of his truck. It's a small wire, so a lot of amps don't flow to the battery. And there's been times where he's towed for six, seven hours in a day where he's actually dissipated his batteries beyond where they should be at 50%. While he still has a little bit of charge in those batteries, his inverter starts to fail because he's below that threshold of where it sees a fully charged battery, and then his refrigerator shuts off. So he's towing, and his refrigerator is off. Um, so he's pretty excited about putting in the batteries like this that charge uh, that allow him to go all the way wherever he's going camping or driving with his residential refrigerator for five, six, seven, eight hours at a time, and he will know for sure that his residential refrigerator will still be running when he gets to the campground that night. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any comments, please put them in the section below. I'll be happy to get back to you on that. Uh, there's links below to Battleborn, and I hope you find more information there and find it very useful. Uh, comments are greatly appreciated. Just type anything down below. Uh, I'll try to get back to you. Uh, the folks at Battleborn have just been wonderful to work with. If I don't know the information, I'll be able to contact them, and then I'll put it back in the comments so that everyone has that information. Thanks. So if you haven't done so yet, please remember to hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell so that it reminds you when we post new videos.